But the big result so far today is the victory for Arsenal away in the North London derby. They won by three goals to two. Three nil up. It went three two after a penalty late on and a mistake by David Raya. Perry Groves was there. He's with us. Hello. Hi, Samuel. Uh, Mickey Gray is here. Hello. Hello. And Gareth, the Spurs fan, is here as well. What do you want to say to the boys? Uh, how you doing, guys? Uh, just start on a light note. I'd like to submit blind in light by the weekend for Fox T. Oh, uh, good, good, great good. Show. <laughs> very good, Gareth. Go for it. I, 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 need, I need something to cheer about after watching that first half display at Tottenham. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Ange, um, but I agree with your last caller. Sometimes I'm left questioning what the guy's thinking. Um, I, and, and also I'm wondering what influence uh, behind the scenes have on the starting lineup. Why have you kept Richarlison and Saar on the bench? Richarlison is a fantastic footballer with the fire. And now when I say fantastic footballer, I mean he knows what a derby's about. He knows what fire to bring to it. And every derby where he's played in, he always brings what you need to bring a team you know, up an extra level. And he showed it when he came on the pitch. Hoiberg shouldn't start the game. Hoiberg is a utility player. He's the guy you bring on to mop up, to make those last these challenges and, and to hassle players, to, to hold a lead or to at least hold a draw. And, and it's left me scratching my head. I love Ange. I think that the football he's brought to Spurs is brilliant. I think that um, he, needs to, he does need to change a few things for next year. And I'm hoping that he gets some more backing in the summer. But I, I, I just think tactically we were completely outdone in the first half and, and we didn't look like we knew what we were doing. Thanks, Gareth. Let's get Mickey Gray's response to that. Yeah, well, the problem is, Sam, and we questioned his starting 11 before kickoff, didn't we? Um, I thought Brennan Johnson should have started the game. Richarlison, you're right. Uh, when it comes to the big games, he's got that physical presence about him as well. But anybody who thinks Ange Postacoglu is going to change the style of football, uh, they're completely wrong. He's done it everywhere he's gone. He's got one way of playing, and if it doesn't work, then that's where they find themselves in deep trouble. Uh, you know Bob has called us as well. Come on, you come back in just a second, uh, but let's speak to Bob. Hello, Bob. Hi, are you all right? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Who do you support, Bob? So I'm an Arsenal fan. But, uh, I was in the pub watching the game with my son, who is the Spurs fan, which is quite weird. Um, really weird. How'd you allow that to happen? How'd you let that happen, exactly? <laughs> well, that's his mum for you. But, uh, but there you go, that's a different story. But Paul you know what? I think Andrew... I think Andrew... <laughs> I tried that. That's why, that's why we're divorced. Um, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Got a counselling session quickly. Let's talk about Ange. Now, I think Ange is getting a, hard, a bit of a hard steal there. I mean, um, I, I, he, he's a bit, he's a bit one way, but he, he, you can see what, what he's doing, and he's, he's building a good side. I'm an Arsenal fan. I love Arsenal. I, I ain't got a lot of problems with Spurs, but the thing is, is that, that they were awful in the first half. Whatever he said to them in the second half worked. Because they absolutely trounced in the second half. They certainly so did. Uh, Bob, can... thank you very much. Um, we'll come back to you, um, I'm sure, at a later point. Um, go on then, Perry, say what I'd you just want to say. Like to say. I know they said Spurs weren't awful in the first half. In general play, Spurs were the better side. They were on the front foot. They were putting us under pressure. We didn't play to levels that we can. And the thing that happens with Spurs is... As the caller said, they get worked out, but they don't change. They keep going and going. And he should have had Basuma and Saar in the centre midfield because it gives you more legs. But it, it, football is very, very fine margins. When it was 1-0, if Van der Ven scores, you know, we said it was his left, it was his left shoulder, wasn't it, and Gabriel's left buttock, then that game changes completely because Spurs were on the front foot. Oh. They can't defend from set pieces. They've got a massive problem with their goalkeeper from that sort of point of view. And... In individual situations, they're not good enough one-on-one -on -one defensively. He did make a good save for Curio, though, from, uh, from, from Bukayo Saka. Saka. Yeah. It was a brilliant save. And if he hadn't have made that, it would have been a rather embarrassing afternoon. Cora is a sport Spurs fan. Hello? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm good, you? Yeah, we're good. Go on, what do you want to say about Ange? Uh, I think with Ange, I think he's obviously we're starting to see it more and more progressively in games where or the opposition are starting to suss out what he's starting to do, where Madison drops deep and he picks up the ball and goes with it. Right, um, it, it kind of concerns me as well that Sonny's off form. This is the first time within all Sonny's career at Spurs that he's been this much off form. He's, he, today, he didn't even want to jump for the ball at all. He had no interest. And then, obviously, he scored the penalty. It was a good penalty, but his performance today were, wasn't great either. That season petering out a little bit, Sam. 
Tottenham. So over the last couple of games, you're just thinking, oh, have, have, have they just ran out of a little bit of energy? Now, knowing that they've got to chase Aston Villa down, they've got some difficult games coming till the end of the season. Yes, we've been impressed with Tottenham at certain times throughout the season, but I think when they look vulnerable is when sides run at them. That's when they've got problems. Well, they, 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 that high line, if you've got speed and you can get in behind it, then you can expose it every single time. It didn't really doesn't really take a genius to work out how to play against Tottenham Hotspur. Stuart Pearce said, actually, during commentary 15 days ago when they played the Newcastle game, he said an eight-year-old with an interest in football can work out how to play against mm. uh, Tottenham. You take corners and stick them right under the goalkeeper and charge into him, and you just get the ball whenever you do. You win it inside your own half and stick it over the top of the line and get speed in behind them. It's obvious. Uh, 03717 as Manchester United women take the lead against Leicester. Uh, let's hear from a disheartened and Postacoglu who has been speaking to Alex Crook after the game. We're obviously disappointed um, in terms of um, the outcome. Um, it was a, a big game for us, a big game for our fans and um, yeah, we uh, we unfortunately um, gave ourselves a mountain to climb uh, in that first period of the game and um, yeah, disappointing outcome. You mentioned you were unlucky not to get an equaliser. It looked like you had got an equaliser with the goal from Van de Ven. Have you had a chance to, to look closely at the, the VAR decision? Are you OK with that? There's no point, mate. Um, I've said all year, I don't think games get officiated at the stadiums anymore. It's why I don't celebrate goals. I wait for somebody down the road to tell me what the outcomes are. And uh, unfortunately, that's the way football's gone. So you've just got to accept whatever decision somebody uh, miles away from here makes. It was a strange first half because actually you were probably the better team and somehow you found yourself 3-0 down. It's difficult to take as a manager, I'd imagine. No, not really, because it is explainable because, like I said, it's about the details and Arsenal are very, very good. They're a good side now. They're focusing on those details and we're not there yet. We're still, you know, we, you need to, if you want to get from where we are to where we want to be, um, it's going to be about the details. It's going to be about the focus and every moment to understand that you can't give opportunities to, to opposition, quality opposition. And, um, yeah, look, our football in general was good, but, you know, we, we let ourselves down by not being focused on the details. You lost uh, Timo Werner as well in the first half. What's the, what's the news on his injury? Uh, I'm not really sure. He fell his hamstring, so um, we'll sort of get an update. And Postacolo speaking to Alex Crook. Seth is a Spurs fan. Hello. Hello. What do you want to yeah. say about Ange Postacoglu? You've just heard from him. He's pretty disappointed. Okay, okay. This, this is facts, right? This is facts. No disrespect to the guy, but I think they should sack him, right? Because he's very stubborn. And uh, I don't know if one of your, your people there to think about an eight-year-old can spot this, yeah? This well, it, it, no, that, that wasn't and my he, people. That was Stuart Pearce, the former England sorry. captain and former oh. Manchester City manager. OK. So, yeah, he's bang on. And the fact of the matter is, he's said in press conferences, and et cetera, he won't change. So if you're not going to change, it's only going to get worse next season. That's the facts. And the first 10 games, everyone's going, oh, well, you know, we did well. The teams we played, I can remember someone mentioning that we hadn't played in one at that time. And, you know, it's just got worse. We've, not, we've gone backwards. So you, reckon, so you don't think he's the answer? So all the positivity that's been surrounding no, the club, the mood no, change, no, the no, energy that's, that's been no. at the stadium, the, the, the positive feeling that has surrounded Tottenham all season, you ain't having any of that. You think it's all just no. bluster? Yeah, because, because you're, getting beat, you're getting hammered. You're getting found out. And do you know what another big factor is? He's never, he's never managed in any of the top four leagues. Yeah, but he's a serial champion everywhere else. He's, he's been a champion at Celtic. That's he's been a champion in Australia. I didn't say it was. I said that he has been a, a champion everywhere else. You're not going to... Listen, you, you, at some stage, surely you have to... A manager has to come from somewhere, has to originate from somewhere, has to have played or managed somewhere else. You don't, you don't start and born into the Premier League. You're not born as a Premier League champion. You have to earn that, right? He no, thinks he's no. earned the right to do that by winning titles elsewhere. And he, his yes. sight is on winning the title. This is how he thinks he's going to okay. do it. Listen, do you? You're not being realistic. I, I'm, okay, I'm just I'm telling you what he would say. I don't care either way. No, I'm okay, telling you yeah, what he what would he say if he was here. It's just, what he says is just pulling the wool out of people's eyes. He's not going to sit there and say, do you know what, my tactics are wrong. He's not going to say that. We have to look at the reality of the situation. He's never managed in a top four league. That's the bottom line. doesn't matter how many leagues he's won elsewhere. He's getting found out left, right and centre. And, and like Stuart Pearce said, like an eight-year-old, and other punters have said it, and he is not going
game to change. OK, Seth, He's thank you very win. much. We'll we'll take that as you're not having Ange. What about you, Mickey? What do you uh, think about those comments? I mean, it's his first season. He's put a squad together. It's obviously going to get stronger in the summer. You wouldn't see too many players leaving Tottenham or the players that he actually wants to keep at the club. So they're going to improve in certain positions. And I think he'll have time to address what he thinks went right and wrong with Tottenham's season at certain periods of this season. And I think he will address that. And as you said, Sam, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. It, it, it's really bizarre sometimes, isn't it, when you, when you listen to some supporters and week by week they get frustrated when they see their side get beat. But the signs are there that Tottenham are a very, very good side. They just need to... Um, tighten up in certain situations I think when it comes to the bigger games and it's just those little moments when they get that sorted out Tottenham will be fine well we'll soon find out 03717 if you want to get in touch you say Ange ain't going to change tell him to look at Son's goals and assists from two seasons ago mate and what position he was picked in then Son behind Richarlison every day of the week uh, Luke getting in touch with us uh, if you want to have your say 037172 Double three, double four. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.